peaceful yet haunting and eerie in a serene kind of way. An old farm sits crumbling a stone's throw from a major road, fading, forgotten, ignored and overlooked. I started at the far end in what I think were sheds and workshops. Nothing but shells, there was no shortage of wild growth coming through the windows and pools of light through the holes in the roof. With burrows in the sandy floor and wild mushrooms on the now indoor trees, I was in my element and took plenty of shots as I worked my way through this section. The flaking paint, grimy doors and interesting ironworks kept me occupied for far too long. It was well past time for me to make my way through the brambles towards the main courtyard with the house and the stables as I was aware that dark clouds were approaching. The roof and the upper floors of the house have long since collapsed. A mess of tiles and moss-covered beams carpet the floor as the ever-growing trees have taken root. The old fireplaces in every room remind you that this was a house built long before the concept of central heating. I don't know when people stopped living here, but the electrical sockets, water pipes and taps are conspicuous by their absence. Obviously, I wasn't expecting them as original features, but it's rare I find a building this intact that doesn't have some signs of 20th century modernisation. After a quick check of the small basement that seems to be doubling up as a paddling pool, it was time for a quick check of the stables, which also contained the only intact staircase, even if the upper floors that they led to are now gone. As far as I can find, the farm's history is nothing out of the ordinary, which is important as most of history is made up of very ordinary things. It's a farm and according to the old maps it was also a kennels. In the 19th century, the land was owned by Sir Thomas Fletcher Fenton Bowie, fourth baronet of Newcastle under Lyme, and the tithe records have a woman named Elizabeth Kebble attached to the property. There were two Elizabeth Kebbles, presumably mother and daughter. One died in 1874 and the other in 1916 at the age of 91. Beyond that, nothing else of note has made it into the records, but if you've made it this far, you should watch this video about an abandoned house in the woods. 